The 2022 season has been a thrilling one so far with new cars, new regulations and much closer racing up and down the field. In this video, we will recap the first half of the 2022 season and go over the top five things we learned so far this year. Let's get started. New regulations and poor poising. When the 2022 Formula One racing season revved up in March, teams took to the track with newly designed cars engineered to give fans and drivers more wheel-to-wheel -wheel action they'd been seeking. In prior seasons, cars had difficulty following each other closely in the corners due to the dirty air effect caused by aerodynamic developments. To fix this, the FIA essentially changed the car design so that cars could follow each other more closely. They also reintroduced the ground effect to increase downforce. With this came porpoising, a phenomenon where cars started bouncing up and down. Early in the season, teams were faced with the challenge of reducing porpoising while maintaining performance. For example, increasing the ride height reduced porpoising, but also reduced performance. The porpoising issue peaked during the Azerbaijan Grand Prix where many drivers suffered severe back pain. Worst hit was Mercedes champion Lewis Hamilton who took almost one minute to get out of his car after parking due to the pain he was in. After this incident, the FIA intervened and made some regulation changes to combat porpoising. These measures helped the teams reduce the bouncing. Overall, in our opinion, the new cars were a huge success. Up and down the grid, cars could be seen following each other more closely. This resulted in good overtakings throughout the season. The highlight was in Silverstone where there was a three-way battle for second and third place between Hamilton, Perez and Leclerc. With porpoising seemingly resolved, the second half of the season should be really exciting in terms of car development and racing. George Russell is the real deal. There was a lot of controversy in 2021 whether George Russell should replace Valtteri Bottas at Mercedes, but it now seems clear that Russell could be the future of Mercedes F1. He currently sits in fourth in the Drivers' Championship, two places ahead of seven-time World Championship teammate Lewis Hamilton. Russell has finished in the top five in every race he has completed, grabbing an impressive five third-place finishes. The only race he did not finish was the British Grand Prix where he had a scary crash with Alfa Romeo driver Guang Yu Zhou. With Lewis Hamilton improving his performance in recent races, it'll be interesting to see if George Russell can finish ahead of him in the Drivers' Championship by year-end. Ferrari needs to make some changes. While many agree with us that Ferrari has underperformed, team principal Matteo Bonotto says that there is no need for changes within the team despite the catalogue of blunders in the first half of the season. These include errors in pit stops, strategy errors, reliability issues, and driver errors. Charles Leclerc summed it up best after the Hungarian Grand Prix saying Ferrari must get better as a whole. Let's review some of the notable mistakes. In the Monaco Grand Prix, Leclerc pitted twice in a matter of a few laps, which led him to lose track position. He ended up finishing fourth in his own Grand Prix, a race which he could have won. Leclerc crashed out of the French Grand Prix from the lead. Leclerc stayed out when the safety car came out in Silverstone. His tires were old and his competitors were able to overtake him for the lead. He ended up finishing fourth. Leclerc used the hard tire for his last stint in the Hungarian Grand Prix. He finished sixth in a race he could have potentially won had he had the right tire. Carlos Sainz faced reliability issues which caused him to have a DNF in the Azerbaijan and Austrian Grand Prix. Leclerc had reliability issues which caused him to have a DNF in the Azerbaijan and the Spanish Grand Prix. It will be interesting to see if Ferrari can sort out their mistakes and come back to form in the second half of the season. Formula One is growing in popularity. Largely due to the great season last year which came down to the last lap, as well as shows like Drive to Survive in Netflix, Formula One has gained popularity worldwide. In North America, Formula One has exploded in popularity. Per Bloomberg, the Walt Disney Company is phoning up $75 to $90 million per year for the broadcasting rights to Formula One. This number is part of a short three-year deal, but it's also a 1,500% increase from the previous F1 agreement. Social media interest in Formula One has also dramatically increased in the last one year. Formula One management is capitalizing on this by introducing five North American races for the 2023 season. The Las Vegas Grand Prix, the Miami Grand Prix, the Canadian Grand Prix, the race at the Circuit of the Americas, and then the Mexican Grand Prix. It's absolutely great to see the popularity of the sport growing in North America. A close title fight in the second half of the season should peak interest in Formula One heading into 2023. F1 racing seems to have a bright future. Verstappen is worth the money Red Bull paid him. Max Verstappen had a tough start to the season, not finishing two out of the first three races. 
After three races, it looked like Ferrari would dominate, with Charles Leclerc running away with the championship. Despite the early reliability problems, Verstappen has managed to win eight races this season and gain 10 podium finishes out of 13 races. What does this mean? When Verstappen doesn't have an issue with the car, he's pretty much unstoppable, guaranteed to win the race. At the end of last season, Verstappen signed one of the biggest ever contracts in F1 history, valued at over $50 million per year. He has proven that he is worth the money. Verstappen currently has 258 points, with next best Charles Leclerc only at 178, a full 80 points behind. His teammate Sergio Perez sits 85 points behind him in the Drivers' Championship. Max is in a class of his own. Hope this video helped you recap the first half of the 2022 season. Before I end this video, I would like to give a shout out to The Work Innovation. This company edits my videos and has done a great job for this channel. If you have video editing needs of any kind, I would highly recommend them. Their information is linked in the description below. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like this video and consider subscribing to the channel for more great Formula One content.